Hi, this is Christian Espinoza with Alpine Security. In this video, we're going to cover risk. We're, we're going to cover three aspects of risk. First off, what is risk? Second, what is a risk matrix? Third, why you have to assess risk continuously. So first off, what is risk? This simple kind of cartoon does a pretty good job explaining what risk is. I think I found this on Cybrary. Uh, I, I'm not sure where they got it from. But the very first scenario here, we have a guy walking along got a, with a baseball cap on. We have a ditch or a hole. It's a very long hole or, or ditch, but it's not very deep. So there's a high probability that this person will step into the hole, but it, since it's not very deep, it's a low impact. So that is ultimately what risk is. It's the intersection of probability and impact. So another term you might hear for probability is likelihood, and another term you may hear for impact is consequence. Second scenario, the guy is walking along, there is a hole, it is not very long, and it is not very deep. So there's a low probability this person will fall in the hole because they could probably step over it, and even if they do fall in the hole, it's a low impact because the hole is not very deep. In the third scenario here, we have the person walking along, and you can see they're we're getting a little bit nervous. They're walking along, and here is the hole. The hole is not very long, but it is pretty deep. So there's a low probability they'll fall into the hole because the person can probably step over the hole or jump over the hole, but if they don't make it, it's going to hurt. Therefore, it's a high impact because there's some stakes at the bottom of the hole down here that are going to impale them. The next scenario here is typically this would be a critical risk because we have a high probability and a high impact. So the person is walking along and they're getting kind of freaked out, you can see by this picture, because this is a very long way. So we have a long hole that is very deep as well. So the probability of them being able to step over or jump over that hole is very unlikely. So there's a high probability they will fall into the hole. And if they fall into the hole, uh, it's going to hurt. So it's a very high impact. So high probability they'll fall in and a high impact. So this is a very high or critical risk typically. For the risk matrix, it is basically takes the things we showed in that cartoonish picture. It shows the likelihood and the impact and the intersection of those two. Again, another term for likelihood is probability. Another term for impact is consequence. In this scenario, we have a rare likelihood circle in red there. So it's not very likely that this thing will happen. And we have a significant impact, however, which is the highest rating on the scale. Risk matrices like this can have different uh, likelihood ratings and different impact rating, ratings. This is just an example. So the intersection of the rare and rare likelihood and the significant impact is, shows, is where this X is, which is a yellow rating or medium. So the overall risk is medium. So even though the impact is significant because the likelihood is rare, the overall risk is medium. If we look at this picture here, on the matrix C we had a rare likelihood but a significant impact. So that would be something like this third picture right here. So this would be a medium risk rating according to our matrix C. This third item here would be medium because there's a low probability or a rare likelihood and there's a high impact or a significant impact. So this overall for this one would be medium if we applied that scenario to our risk matrix right here. The third thing I wanted to talk about or our risk matrix, I should say, not matrix, this is a risk matrix. Uh, the third thing I wanted to talk about is how risk changes with time. A lot of people do an assessment and they think they're good to go, but risk changes with time, so you need to continually assess 
your risk. In this scenario, let's say we had a Windows Server 2016 um, system that was housing or held protected health information, personally identifiable information, or intellectual property, or a combination of those three. But it is fully patched. So that, that Windows 2016 server could apply to this risk matrix right here. It's fairly rare. It's rare from a likelihood perspective that somebody can break into it because it's fully patched. But if they do break into it, the impact is significant because we have PHI, PII, and intellectual property or IP on that server. So the overall rating currently is a medium. But let's say the NSA has some of their awesome hacking tools leaked, which has happened before, like Eternal Blue. So today, Eternal Blue is released. It's in the wild. Everyone has, a, has gotten a hold of it, which is an exploit that works against Windows Server 2016. Now, the likelihood of somebody being able to exploit your Windows 2016 server has gone from rare to near certain because there's an exploit out there that has been incorporated into Metasploit that is very easy to use. Pretty much anybody can use it with a little bit of training. So the likelihood or the probability has gone from rare to near certain, like this picture here shows. The impact did not change because you still have the PHI, the PII, and the IP on that server. But because the likelihood changed from one day to the next, now the server that previously had a medium risk rating has a critical risk rating. This illustrates why it is important to continually assess risk. In this video, we talked about what risk is, a risk matrix. We've been talking about risk matrix here, and we talked about how risk should be continually assessed. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions or recommendations for a future video, leave them beneath this video. Please subscribe to our channel, and good luck managing risk.